Okay, so I had a comment about three weeks ago uh, from Steve Gravel, and it was about running Fedora 34 on the Pi 4, and it was an operating system I haven't covered before. Um, and I did download it from the Fedora site, and we'll go into screen capture just to show you what it's like. Okay, so let's just log in. Now this is running from a Samsung bar, which is faster than an SD card, um, and it works, but it is incredibly slow. Now not to worry, because I have been sent an alternate link uh, but I thought I'd show you this first because it looks really, really nice. Uh, so I think this is the new GNOME 40 desktop. And uh, you can see if I type in here, so say for instance I type terminal, uh, it comes up. And I think uh, probably with uh, something like sound, it will give me some sort of settings options. Oh, it started to. But you can see that it runs very, very slow. Um, but looks really, really nice. Um, so I was, it was a shame when I couldn't get it to work. If I click on a desktop, you see it's a really nice desktop background. If I press the Windows key, it comes up with this and I can switch desktops. Um, but overall, it is definitely too slow. Even the mouse, moving the mouse pointer sometimes gets a, a bit jumpy. And if I go to Firefox, just to show you the version that I downloaded, Okay, so I'm still waiting for Firefox, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna boot it up into a different operating system to show you the one I downloaded. Um, but uh, since then, I had another comment from DKTOL56. They also mentioned Fedora 34 and also said they work great, uh, but they're actually talking about an X64 device, and it does say it in the comment, but I missed it. But I responded, thanks, have your download link for Fedora. I downloaded it, unfortunately the version I tried ran very slow, as you've just seen. And so as a response, DKTOL56 uh, explained that they were using the X64 version, but also sent me a link for Fedora 34. So I tried it in a few different operating systems. Uh, so if I click on the link here from my emails, you can see it's on here on Ask Fedora. And from Michael Katzman, Unfortunately, Fedora still is not supporting the Raspberry Pi 4 very well, no accelerated graphics. However, there is a project on RPM Fusion that links Fedora with the kernel from the Pi Foundation. This means that you get the Fedora 34 desktop with full video driver, V34, VC3 accelerated support. I installed it last week and it works great. So there's a link on here, so we click on the link. And if you scroll down, the one you're looking for is the one that says pre-built images here, and it's Workstation and Arch 64. So it's this one here. So if you click on image, you can see this happens. This site can't be reached. Uh, and I tried it on Windows, I tried it on a few different operating systems, and I just couldn't get it to work. So I booted up my Mac and figured I'd go through my phone's connection. Okay, so same website on my Mac, uh, but what I've got to do is tether to my phone because for some reason my ISP blocks it. Now you might not get this issue, but this is the way I got around it. So if I click on the Wi-Fi, uh, my phone shows up on a Mac, so I can just go through that and now I'm tethered to my phone. So now if I click on it and click on the image, you can see that it shows up and then it gives me an option and I just did the free download which took a while but it worked fine. Now once the image had been downloaded uh, I could start up Raspberry Pi Imager so it doesn't matter what operating system you do this on it is more possibly to do with your ISP blocking it. So choose OS, go down to custom, find the download that you've downloaded which is that one Fedora Workstation, hit open then you need to pop a storage device in so I'm using a micro SD card. I tried my Samsung bar, but I couldn't get it to work. Uh, and I even tried an SSD drive and it also didn't work. So it seems to be better on an SD card. So I've got a 128 gig SD card and just write the image to the SD card. And here it is with a nice welcome screen. So let's start setup. I don't need to connect to the Wi-Fi because I'm on ethernet, but you can see that it's showing up as normal. Okay, so I'm trying to type in here and it's not letting me do it, but it looks like you've got to pick an avatar first of all. So let's do that. That looks like my cat. No, it's still no keyboard. Okay, so this is weird. I had exactly the same thing with uh, a recent version of Ubuntu where my mouse would work, but my keyboard, the actual letters wouldn't work. So I've plugged in another keyboard, uh, but I haven't tried to press any buttons on that keyboard. It's actually a, a portable keyboard that I've plugged in and uh, all of a sudden my Logitech has sprung to life. So whether it's to do with uh, Logitech, I mean, I never have problems with this Logitech keyboard, but that's twice I've had that uh, with two very similar operating systems. But now, as you can see, I can type in 
You may not get this issue at all. It may just be a Logitech thing, but I know a lot of people have got these Logitech keyboards. Okay, so all done. So yeah, all the nice setup screens and everything. Welcome to GNOME 40, eh? We might as well take the tour. Learn about new and essential features in Fedora 34 Workstation Edition. Get an overview, press activities to see open windows and apps. Make apps your own, arrange the app grid to your liking. Keep on top with workspaces, easily organize windows with the new workspaces view. I do like that workspaces view. Up, down for the overview. On a touchpad, use three finger vertical swipes. I don't know if mine supports that, but we'll try that in a second. Uh, and left and right with three fingers. I like multi-touch gestures. Uh, that's it, we hope you enjoy Fedora 34. So let's try three fingers up. Yeah, it doesn't do anything on this particular keyboard. Interestingly, let's try my portable one. I know that supports two finger gestures, but I don't think it supports three. Like I can't even get three on there because it's so small. No, so it doesn't work on that one either. So you need a bit more sophisticated a touchpad to be able to do that. So let's try that activities button. Well, that's the same as pressing the Windows key. So Windows key does that. And already I can see it's much more swift than the other one was. So if I type in sound, uh, you can see that it's searching, sound, change levels, accessibility, keyboard, characters. Software's come up here as well. So let's have a look at the software window. Browse software. Okay, so that bit takes a while, but that's understandable. Uh, we've got a load of updates, look, 42 updates. Operating system updates, performance stability and security improvements. Wow, maybe my keyboard fix is in there somewhere. Calendar, Firefox has got an update. Gnome calculator, Gnome maps. Okay, I think it's probably wise that I let it do all its updates, but I need to address the time first of all. So let's click on the time and see. Doesn't look like I can change the settings in that part. So let's go into uh, settings here. Date and time, automatic date and time, well, oh okay, so it's New York time. So let's pick UK and close that. Really nice settings, the same as you get in uh, Ubuntu and all those variations. So if I flick through, everything is nice and swift. So things like background, I wonder how many backgrounds they put in there. Yeah, a few different very stylish looking backgrounds. Notifications, always handy to be able to turn all that sort of stuff off. Uh, the fact that you can search various different things. Yeah, these menus do definitely feel all right. Oh look, low space on home, so I need to expand the partition. Now have I got, oh let's do this, let's have a look. Let's ignore that. It might have done it itself, but let's do it. I always do it with Gparted anyway. So I'm gonna close this for now and type in Gparted and see if anything comes up, which it doesn't. Oh, but it comes up look, under software. That's a very nice touch, isn't it? So now it's found it. I can click on install it. This is a very polished OS. And a picture of Gparted. Description. Reviews. Ubuntu is terrible. <laughs> okay, I quite like Ubuntu. Uh, right, so launch. And let's have a look at the partitions. Oh, authentication. What's going on here? I wonder what we do. We do the examine. Oh, yeah, so I clicked on examine. Uh, so if I click on that disk, does it, does it automatically let you do it? Or is this just a warning saying that you're running out of space, you need to sort something out? Could not always detect occupied disks. And what does this bit do? Look at that. Wow. It looks nice. Uh, so I don't know what's happened with Gparted. Uh, I think what I might do is do these updates, restart, and then try and resize. Actually, no, I can't do the updates because that wouldn't be wise to do that. Let's restart, expand the partition, and uh, then we'll do all the updates, and then I'll do another test of the operating system. Okay, so let's launch Gparted. So, yeah, very nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm going to expand the partition uh, in Twister OS. Uh, so let's do that. Okay, so I'm in Twister OS and I'm running the operating system from an SSD drive. And you can see the SD card which I was running Fedora from. I've just popped that in now. And let's switch back over to screen capture. 
So let's hit the Windows key and type in Gparted. Here we go, different icon. So I need to change the right one. Uh, so, oh, it's picked. Yeah, so that's my operating system running on. Oh, it's a 64 gig SD card. I thought it was a 128. Uh, so we need to click on this one and right click and why well, wouldn't it do resize? Doesn't seem to want to resize that partition. Well, I haven't had that happen before. Yeah, usually you just get a resize option. Uh, I wonder if this is a 32-bit operating system that it's making a difference for some reason. So let's boot this up in something else. Okay, so I booted up Monka Fenix Gyro, which is a 64-bit OS based on Manjaro, uh, because I figured it may work in that. So let's click on that, and yeah, I've got a resize option. So maybe you need a 64-bit OS to do that on? I haven't come across that before, I'm pretty sure I haven't. Right, let's hit resize. So I'm using all of the 64 gig space and apply all operations. Here we go. So all done. So now I have the full available space on that. Let's boot back into Fedora 34. And let's go into files just to check uh, and see that everything looks all right within this operating system. Uh, so I guess if I do other locations, yeah, there you go, that 55.5 gig available shows up my network drive which is nice to see always let's see if that connects nice and simply it generally does in all these sort of ubuntu style operating systems so public yeah i'm straight in no questions uh, just works straight away which is really nice to see generally sees my printer as well so if i was to uh, do a search for printers printers, add printers. Yeah, so it's picked up my printer and I'm, I'm sure it will work with that. Right, let's do those updates. So software, let's click on that, go to updates and let it do all those updates. Yeah, restart and update. And we'll come back when it's all been updated. And I like the touch with the different fruit at the top there. Okay, so it's already started, but I did look up how to update from the terminal just out of interest. Uh, so if I call up the terminal, the commands you need for Fedora are sudo dnf upgrade, or you can put in update, they both do the same thing. Total download 978 megabytes. That's quite big. Okay, let's come back when that's all done. So let's open some things up and have a look. So Firefox first. And while that's opening up, let's have the calendar and the files app. And just see where it places everything. So you can see it's got all three there. Uh, if I click on the files, that becomes the top one. Uh, if I want to go back to Firefox, I can do that. Uh, and then if I type in, say for instance, Raspberry Pi, and let's just get an image. There you go, that one will do. That's a reasonable size, so save image as. Let's save that in the pictures folder. So what is it? It's a JPEG, so that should import no problem into uh, LibreOffice Writer, which I haven't opened up yet. So let's go to All Apps and Writer. It does feel pretty snappy. Uh, it feels way, way better than the other one. Uh, and so you can see the folders, everything looks really nice here. Everything very logical. So if I go into my Pictures folder, what does that open with as default? It opens with Image Viewer. Yeah, which looks great. It's a nice quality image. So let's go back to Writer, and let's insert an image from Pictures. Pick that one. Yeah, that works fine. Insert, uh, well, I can probably just start typing text, can I? Raspberry Pi, and what model is that? It's a Raspberry Pi 4. Let's go back to those folders. So Calendar View, uh, go back to that which is uh, my folders and files. Yeah, it does It does feel all right. I need to check out uh, what video playback is like. Let's just have a quick look at what apps come pre-installed. We've got Cheese, Rhythmbox, Help. So the LibreOffice, we've got uh, Calc and also Impress as well, so the PowerPoint version. Text editor there as well. System monitor. Yeah, all working fine. Uh, and if we wanted to close some of these down, Really easy to just hover over them and close them by the X. I'll leave Firefox as the only one open for the video test. 
I won't save that. So let's do my usual search, Hot UK Deals. Feels pretty good. I remember this is running from an SD card as well. I'm not overclocked. I haven't even looked into overclocking yet. Uh, BBC, and let's go for BBC Sport. Go back to Hot UK Deals, have a look at that page. And let's go full screen. Will I double tap to go full screen? Yeah. Uh, so scrolling through, scrolling is nice and smooth. Back to BBC Sport. It's still loading in some of these images. Oh, there you go. It's got there now to most of them. Right, let's close that down and call up YouTube. There's nothing along here that's been added in. Let's call up my demo video, Lee PSP video HDR. Here we go. Click on that and let's see how well that works. Okay, the audio is a bit distorted, doesn't sound too great, uh, but let's have a look at the image and see how well that's playing. I'm going to turn off that audio. Uh, so if I go to settings, it's only on 480 at the moment. Let's try 720. Not the high strength playing video, especially web video. Yeah, it looks a bit jerky, doesn't it, already? So let's go for stats for nerds. So what we drop in, 27 frames of 171. Just went for it to update, 31, 32. Oh, it looks like it's stabilized a bit, 34 frames. Yeah, it kind of has to be expected, uh, but certainly way better than the, well, the other Fedora uh, download that I had earlier on in the video was just wasn't going to play video at all. Yeah, it does seem to be holding on to that better. Let's pop it up to 1080 just in case. So 1080. And see how many frames it starts to drop. We'll give it a while just to just to settle down. 60 frames. It's dropping quite. I'm not looking at the video. I've been looking at the stats. Yeah, you can see the video is pausing. So maybe needs a bit of work. Uh, I could always install H.264 if I to to 30 frames a second. Although it looked like that was trying to do 30 frames a second anyway. So yeah, should have should have been alright. Uh, as I say, video on the Raspberry Pi has always been uh, not the greatest thing. There are a few operating systems which manage it well, but uh, yeah, not that many 64-bit ones. So overall, I really like Fedora 34. Uh, the operating system looks great. It's very logical. Uh, lots of the key things are working really well. Lots of key software is installed. And uh, yeah, I'm really impressed with how well they've got this to work. Considering the version I tried before, which really was very sluggish and, and was unusable, this is perfectly usable as a day-to-day -day operating system. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.